Building can be a hard thing to do, especially with the standards for creators right now. Which is actually pretty low, you can start with the feature section on site right now, this is pretty bad. So I'll be giving you some helpful tips to make your life easier, and make the person playing your level actually like the level. The most important part to a level can arguably be the first jump. So when starting a level, make sure the first jump is good. Now this can be kinda confusing when I talk about it, so let me give you some examples. In a level, you should give the player time to react to any dangers or obstacles in their way. Do not start the level out with an immediate jump, as this will cause a lot of unneeded deaths and frustrate the player. A triple spike can be used for the first jump, but just know that people will hate you for it, like, a lot. For some good examples of first jump, a jump pad in the gameplay, an easy to see wall that starts off screen and doesn't speed or fly at the player, or an easy spike jump that doesn't require a lot of precise timing to hit. When making a transition, you should aim to have it be easy to read and doesn't detriment the player in any way when going through it. For example, here's a good transition for intrusion. The portal from ship to wave does not hurt the player at all and gives them plenty of time to react to what is occurring. The portal itself is also marked with a blue glow to alert the player of its presence. This is a good transition. Now here's a bad transition for intrusion, the spider portal. Although it can be easily seen, it does not show the upcoming gameplay, making reading it a hard task. Not only that, but once you enter the portal, the screen is covered by a white flash, making it even harder to read. And to make it even worse, you need to react fast to the approaching wall at 4x speed. This is not how you should make a transition. Well, I'll just put some jump pads in a portal and make sure the player doesn't die when they enter. <laughs> no! Here's something in transition you wouldn't realize is bad. Here's a ship portal that leads into a simple gameplay section. At the top is some gameplay and spikes, and at the bottom is a saw and some gameplay. Doesn't look too bad, right? But something is done to <laughs> the player that can actually be an obstacle in itself. What would be a good way to help the player not die here by accident? Maybe put jump pads in the portal? Oh yeah, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. No! Instead of making sure the player doesn't hit the saw and the gameplay when they enter the portal. But I think we've all had the experience at one point or another. The player will click on the portal to avoid the saws, which, with the boost of the purple jump pads, it launches the player into the ceiling spikes. So when the player reaches the portal again in another attempt, they will not click expecting the purple jump pads to send the player onto the gameplay, but it ends up sending them into a wall. This is something that is commonly done levels to help transitions without realizing the problem it presents to the player. An easy way to avoid this problem is to simply, I don't know, NOT PUT JUMP PADS IN THE PORTAL! And in addition to this, make sure that there is no immediate threats that the player has to avoid when entering the portal. So in this situation, what we can do is remove the saw and modify the gameplay slightly, so you don't die upon entering. When making decoration, make sure it does not obstruct the player's vision to the point of making certain obstacles unseen, such as saws or walls. Another thing is the decoration making it hard to see gameplay and its obstacles. Such as an equally damaged, this UFO section has these block arches that connect to the floor and the roof of the section. But what is hard to figure out is if they are solid blocks or not. So when the player is in the section, they will assume that it's solid and attempt to avoid it or land on it, just to see that it isn't solid and hit the wall. An easy way to avoid this is to make what is solid and what isn't solid apparent. Such as with arrows or using object lines. When decoration is covering the player in obstacles, try and make the decoration go in front of the player at points where there are no obstacles, or the obstacles can be easily seen and located, such as showing them before they are covered or adding scenes such as flashing red arrows or exclamation points. The Builder Help tool can be really confusing for new players as the options themselves aren't really explained by RobTop. The Builder Help tool is an amazing tool especially for replicating effects or movements. Such as in Jungle Inferno, I use the Builder Help tool to make these firework effects. What you do is you select the effect and triggers associated with it. Then you copy and paste the effect and with it still selected, you click the Builder Help option in the menu. This will take the groups and move them to new unused groups, meaning that you can move the new copy pasted effect wherever you want, and it won't affect the previous effect as the new groups aren't associated with it. I see it too often that people are afraid to even touch the copy face tool due to the hate associated with people using it. But this didn't want to be farther from the truth as many prominent creators use the tool often. Even I use it a lot of the time to keep certain designs of the level coherent and matching. When using the tool, you shouldn't feel that you can just blatantly copy and paste designs all over the place, as this will definitely get you called out for using it. 
What you should do is use the tool to move designs around easily, and then editing the designs so they aren't exact copies. This helps the ease of building times with certain large scale levels. It's a great tool, and don't feel that you shouldn't use it just because there's a joke flying around about it. When making 3D, you should be aware of how 3D itself works. 3D works on a singular view plane, as in 3D going one way on one block should continue going the same way on another. A common mistake made is where 3D on a ground block is facing the correct direction, but the 3D on the ceiling is facing the wrong direction, which can be seen here. See how it doesn't look right? What should be done is removing the ceiling 3D and replacing it with the 3D blocks that go on the side of the blocks. A weird thing about this mistake is that it can often be used to find someone using the copy-paste tool without thinking of changing the designs or simply overlooking the 3D. Colors are a really important part to a level, and can most of the time make or break the level itself. A good color combo will easily fit with the level and might not even be noticed, while a bad color combo will stand out easily and normally clash with the level itself. A good example of great color combos is Operos by Baton, which uses very smooth and slightly pale colors that don't clash with each other, making for a very clean and organized looking level. While a bad example of color combos would be Bao by Creatorlings, which uses colors such as red and green together, and some dark grays, which creates a messy and unorganized feel to the level. A good tool to look at when making color combos is actually just a simple color wheel. When designing a level, it's also a good idea to think of how you want the color palette to be before starting. So you want a super flashy level of bright neon colors, or do you want a calm level with nice pastels and some small pulses? When using move triggers, the ease option is almost essential to anything the player can see. Some eases are better than others, obviously, such as exponential in and out compared to back in and out. It's a really good idea to use easing when moving objects on the screen that the player can see, such as gameplay or effects, as move triggers without any easing look ugly and wrong. Such as the movement of this block. When using no easing, it's very rough, and the movement itself doesn't look good. But when using ease in and ease out, it's a very smooth and nice looking movement that can really enhance the design and flow of a level. And lastly, we have a very important part to the level that most people don't consider actually when building. The name. When naming a level, you should go for something unique that stands out from other levels. Two word names normally look more enticing to players compared to one name levels, such as heart compared to heartbreaker. Though it's not a bad thing to do, naming the level after a song can be really boring and it's looked down upon for its lack of creativity. Certain names obviously shouldn't be used due to more popular levels using them, such as God Eater or Bloodbath. A really good thing to do when making a name is make sure the name for your level is in fact a real word and not some made up jumble. For example, the word quantumication sounds really cool and kinda sciencey, but it doesn't actually mean anything. Using multiple words for the name can look really confusing and normally doesn't flow well. Although there are some exceptions such as Heroes Never Die, such a name as As a Man Once Bid Me or Devourer of Gods. Cool names, but they don't really flow well. Using words that have the same first letter can also really enhance the name a lot and make it flow really well, such as Umbral Ultimatum or Robotic Retaliation. Now you don't always need to have a good name, as there are many good levels out there with bad names such as OMG Aliens or E. Just know that when using names like this, people will tend not to like it. Dedicating a level to someone such as a friend or the verifier can be a very nice gesture, but don't go overboard with it. A lot of levels I see during my request are dedicated to a lot of GD mods, normally to attempt to get a send out of them, which normally doesn't work. So I recommend leaving the dedications to a few close friends, or even just not having them at all.